Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Y'all ready to close out this year? How many people in here love the Lord Jesus Christ with all your heart? Hello. What's up? Okay. Let me ask you one more time. Are you glad you're saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Spirit? Awesome. Let's take about 30 seconds and lift our hands and lift our voice and shout to God with a voice of triumph. Father, we love you tonight. We love you tonight, Jesus. Bless your name. Come on, begin to thank him for all the trouble, all the trials, everything he brought you through this year. Give him praise for it. Now thank him for every victory, all the times you overcame. Father, we bless you tonight. Now I want you to take a minute and high five about four people and tell them you're in the right place at the right time. Appreciate Pastor Pastor Dick introducing you all to Prescott Theodore Hawkins. And uh, he is my third grandson, my seventh grandchild. And he was just born two days ago. And it was very difficult for me to, to leave old Theodore. <laughs> he, got, he got them lips, you know, them lips you just want to kiss all day. He's just precious. And his little brother, Paxton, Paxton is a year, 14 months older than him. And Paxton very aggressive. So I told Dustin, I said, be careful when you introduce Paxton to Pres Prescott because uh, he not knowing know what to think. And Dustin texted me today. He said, Dad, it's the funniest thing. Paxton keeps looking at Joanna like she's cheating on him. He keeps trying to pull Prescott out of her arms so that he can climb up there. He don't understand his mama giving this other baby all this attention. But I'm so thrilled about my grandchildren, speaking of my children and grandchildren. Thanks to all of you. Many of you follow me on Facebook, and I appreciate all your encouragement. And you saw where Kendra got in that car wreck a few weeks ago, and her car flipped three times. And uh, that's my youngest daughter. And um, the last time it flipped, it actually flipped over a fire hydrant, landed on a fence on all four wheels. That morning, I pray for my grandkids and kids. Every time they come to my house before they leave, I always lay hands on all of them and pray for them. And that morning, I prayed for Kendra like I always do. But that morning, I just felt an urge to pray a little longer. Let me encourage you. When you feel that urge, go ahead and do it. And I prayed a special prayer over her. I said, Lord, cover her and protect her today. I said, I just speak caution to everything that happens to her. And I just speak protection over her. And I really believe if we just take just that moment that we feel like, you know what, I need to pray specifically for a thing, that God hears us always when we pray. But we need to be sensitive enough to him, sensitive enough to him to know how we ought to pray. And when she called me, when that phone rang, Pastor, I knew something had happened. And in her voice, she, she was just broken. And she said, Dad. And I immediately jumped up from my desk, run into my bedroom to change clothes. I knew I was going to have to leave. She said, I've been in a wreck, but I'm okay. I said, what happened? She said, my car flipped three times. Whew, I don't know about you all. But my heart fell down in my shoes. I thought, oh, Jesus. So I thought she was just talking. You know, a lot of times when you're shocked, you don't feel the pain. You may have something broken. When I got there, she's standing right by her car. She did not have one scratch on her. She did not have a broken bone, not one scratch. I believe when that car was flipping and it almost hit that fire hydrant, I just believe that an angel of God just reached down and carried that car 
right over that fire hydrant and laid it gently down on that fence. And let me tell you something. If you love your kids anything like I love mine, and I know you do, then you know that you ought to pray fervently enough to believe that God's got them at all times, no matter what's going on. Can you say amen? I give honor where honor is due tonight. I thank the Lord for Pastor Dick Bernal. He has been my pastor for about 10 years now. And uh, Carla and Pastor Adam, Pastor Michelle, everybody, love all of you guys. I got some time last time I was here to hang out with Pastor Larry and Loretta. And they're just incredible, incredible people. But I love my pastor. And the Bible says give honor where honor is due. And uh, I don't know how you feel, but you ought to be really happy about having the best pastor in the whole world. I want you to stand on your feet and clap your hands and give honor to Pastor Dick Burnell. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor. Remain standing, please. Remain standing for the reading of God's Word, and we're going to get right into this. Now, I'm not going to preach very long tonight. I'm going to preach right up to 11.59. And right at 11.59, we're going to say amen and leave. No, I'm, I, I'm not going to preach long, just, just a few minutes. But I know God's going to move by his spirit on this particular day. This is a special day. Revelation chapter 3, please. Verse number 7. Revelation chapter 3, verse number 7. And the Bible says, And to the angel of the church at Philadelphia write, These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that has the key of David, he that opens and no man shuts, and shuts and no man opens. I know thy works. Behold, I have sent before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength and hast kept my word, and has not denied my name. I'm going to preach a message tonight entitled, It's Time to Close Out. I need you to say that to about four people around you. It's time to close out. <laughs> <coughs> Remain standing as we pray. Father, I thank you now for an open heaven over this sanctuary. And I ask you to give your servant the strength tonight to preach this word with accuracy and help me to articulate heaven's announcements over every person's destiny in this building. And I thank you for a congregation of people, a community of believers that are hungry for a word from you tonight. And Jesus, you said, blessed are the hungry, they shall be filled. So Father, we thank you for a spiritual appetite all over this building tonight. As we close out 2016, we just want to thank you for everything you've done for us this year. We bless you tonight for everything you accomplished in us and everything we've been able to achieve in our purpose in 2016. For we understand that we go from glory to glory and we go from faith to faith. So Father, for the next few moments of time, we ask you to allow revelation to run its course in each of our hearts. Not break every generational curse and Dismiss every generational spirit and anything that is diametrically opposed to our destinies is dismissed now in the name of Jesus. We speak to every principality, power, ruler, spiritual authority in this area, in this region, and we tell you your time is up. Back up in Jesus' name. The revival shall hit the Bay Area. Revival shall hit every house of God in this community. Great renewal and restoration and reformation shall come to these congregations. We thank you, Lord, specifically for the revival we see on the horizon for the church called Jubilee Christian Center. And now, Lord, we call from the north, south, east, and west every soul that belongs to this house that there would be a spiritual gravitational pull from all four corners of this earth, that they would come from all four sides of this city and we thank you for that great awakening that shall begin in 2017. We believe it shall spread across this nation. And we bless you now. 
We're going to praise you, Lord, before it even happens. As a matter of fact, God, we're going to praise you. If you never do another thing for us, we've got reason enough to praise you for the rest of our life. If you never give us another blessing, if we never see another miracle, we've got reason to praise you. So, Lord, we're going to clap our hands one more time and lift our voice and praise you for all the great things you have done, all the great things you're doing. Come on, saints, let's bless him tonight. He's been good to us. Bless your name, Jesus. High five somebody one more time and tell them it's on right now. Amen. Boy, I feel an anointing in here. And you, you may be seated. I, I want to get my part done as quickly and succinctly as the Lord allows so that Pastor Dick can come and do the things he needs to do. As we look at this last day of 2016, there's going to be some things you're going to have to reconsider. There's going to be some things that you're going to have to relinquish. But there are also things you need to remember, some things you need to recall. Before you leave this year, there will be some things you need to deny and reject. And then there will be some things that you need to believe God to restore to you. And as we close out this year, the Lord began dealing with me specifically about numbers and times. You know, the Bible says of David's mighty men that they understood the times and they knew what Israel should do. It's, very, it's something very powerful about a people that understand the times they are living in, not just the Kairos times, but the Kronos time that they're living in. In particular, what is going on in the cosmos or the area, the arena, the phase or duration of your destiny. And I just came by to tell you, you're not going through anything that God doesn't know about. He is fully aware of everything you are facing. And he's fully capable and willing to deliver you from anything you are going through. And listen, let me say this to you. Even before the, 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 the clock strikes 12 o'clock tonight, God's going to deliver you from some things that you've been praying about all year. Touch your neighbor and tell him, don't give up yet, my brother or my sister. Amen. There's a few hours left on this clock. And I believe God's going to do something tremendous in that way. So transitions, what I call transitions and portals and passages are tedious in timing. So it's not just where you are going, but how you leave determines how you enter. So if you leave with a bad attitude, that determines your entrance. So you must be very careful about how you leave this year and be very set, be very resolute, be very convicted about how you want to embark on the next phase of your destiny. Can you say amen to that? Here's what I've learned about transitions. Transitions oftentimes equated to modulations. Modulations are ascensions. They're very important to musicians because when you modulate, you either modulate a half step in music or a whole step. The purpose of modulation is intensity. So when you're singing a song and you modulate a half step, it adds a certain amount of intensity. The whole step adds more intensity to the atmosphere. Many of you have been experiencing intensity in your life, and you're wondering what in the world is going on. Why am I feeling so much intensity and pressure all around me? And let me just encourage you. The feeling you are experiencing right now in regards to intensity and pressure is not going to break you. As a matter of fact, it's only taking you up a step. It's taking you up to another level. And so embrace that moment of intensity and say, God, I know you are pushing me up. You, you, God is a God of promotion, not demotion. And God is going to live there. As you cross over into next year, don't see yourself just as coming out of a thing, but see yourself going up into another thing. See yourself stepping up tonight, not stepping down. And you know what? I'm going to just bind every enemy of discouragement and disillusionment and anything else that has come on you this year and tell you that if it could have broken you, you would be broken. If it could have killed you, you would be gone. But you're still here clothed and in your right mind, which is a sign 
that God is not finished with you yet. I'm getting off my notes because I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Tell your neighbor I feel like George Jefferson. I'm moving on up. <laughs> Amen. So I have to be, I have to stay with this. Did I get, y'all get me too excited over here at Jubilee? Yeah. <laughs> so these passages and transitions are very important in regards to time. Numbers are also very significant to God. We all know that. If, if it's not important, then why would God put a whole book in the Bible called Numbers? And I'm a student of Numbers. And um, when I looked at 17 and really started studying it, I started realizing that 17 could be one of the most prophetic years we have enjoyed as the people of God in a very long time. And I started digging down into it in, in Scripture and I, got, I started getting very excited. In Scripture, there are 17 angelic visitations. When I started thinking about that, I started thinking, man, that's going to be very powerful if God just kind of embraces that number 17. How would you like to have an angelic visitation in 2017? That'd be awesome, wouldn't it? So Joseph is 17 years old. Joseph is 17 years old when he's sold into slavery by his brothers. Now, it looked like it was the end of the matter. But in all reality, it was Joseph embarking on the greatest segment of his destiny. Because at 17, at 17, if his brothers would not have cast him in a pit, he would have never found himself living in a palace. So I see 17 as a year that God is going to begin stuff in us that he's already completed for us. But the journey is the predominant element. So get ready to enjoy a phase of your purpose that you have never enjoyed in your whole life. When I look at the clock a few hours from now, y'all excuse my country vernacular, I feel very relaxed tonight. I smile big enough that I could eat a banana sideways because I realize that God has something in store for me in 2017 that I've never experienced. If you believe that, I double dog dare you to clap your hands and shout to God with a voice of triumph. This is your year. <laughs> So let, let me finish this real quick. 17, spiritual perfection and spiritual order. 10 is the number of order. 7 is the number of perfection. There are two kinds of order, systematic order and spontaneous order. And I need to say this because God showed me something in regards to this coming year. But things have to be fixed before midnight tonight. So God is going to restore order in a very powerful way. Systematic order is order that comes from the top down. It's a prophet Isaiah speaking to a king, Hezekiah, and saying, set your house in order. So this is a order. It is a commandment. Get your stuff together. Now listen, it's very important for all of us to take 2017 and get our stuff back together. Come on, y'all. We cannot be living half-stepping lackadaisical, procrastinating, and using excuses for not operating and living in excellence. Talk back to me. Amen. So spiritual order. And then spiritual, okay, so spontaneous, systematic order is top down. Spontaneous order is emergent behavior or emergent structure. You don't have to teach fish to swim in a school. They know when they are in the school, it's easier to swim. You don't have to teach geese to fly in a V formation. It's innate in them to get in order because if they get in order, it makes flying easier. The Lord spoke to me and said, I'm going to put something in my people that's going to bring them into such formation in their life that the getting to their prophetic future is going to be the easiest path they ever took. Man, I need a witness right there. Let me leave it because I don't want to develop that too much. So 10 is the number of order, spiritual order, systematic order, spontaneous order. Seven is the number of perfection. 
Seven is the number of perfection. It's when God perfects everything concerning you. And that's what David said. David said, Lord, perfect that which pertains to me. This is the year you need to quit worrying about everybody else's business. And lift your hands and say, search me, O God, and see if there be any iniquity in me, any unclean thing in me, and take it far from me. Can you say amen to that? So I want you to throw your hands up and say, Lord. Come on, throw them hands and say, Lord, bring spiritual perfection in my life. And bring spiritual order in my life. In Jesus' name. So, to close out, right? I'm going to give you three words, and I'm done. Number one is conclusion. Everyone say conclusion. To bring to an end, to make a decision. Tonight, make the decision. A double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. Decision is different than incision. Incision is to cut in. Decision is to cut off. You cut off all other options, all other alternatives, all other suggestions. Cut it all off. And some of us in this building tonight need to make a decision to cut off everything in our life that slows us down in our prophetic progress in regards to our purpose. Make the decision tonight. As a matter of fact, close your eyes right now and think of that one thing that has been just nagging you and hindering you all year that you know you have the ability to cut that thing off. And then just make the decision to bring it to an end. To be a conclusive person means to end the debate and to end the questioning. Stop questioning. Stop debating with God about what you ought to do with your life. Go ahead on, like we say in Louisiana, go ahead on. And give him your whole heart. Give him your whole life. And say, God, this year I'm serving you with everything I have in me. I'm not giving you 50%, 60%. This is my 100% year. Somebody clap your hands and say amen. God is a God of conclusions. Isaiah says in chapter 46, he said, I declare the end from the beginning. And I love it because conclusions, when you're writing essays, is the most difficult part to write. But for God, it's the best thing to write. What are you saying, Bishop? I'm saying he already wrote your end before he gave you a beginning. He finished this year before, for you before the year ever started. So conclusions in times get God very excited because God says, now I can go ahead and conclude this matter in my servant. Once and for all, no more debates, no more questioning, no more meandering, no more wondering. But finally, the conclusion has arrived. Ecclesiastes says, better is the end of a thing than the beginning. God has a way of bringing back climatic conclusions, bringing around climatic conclusions, which means God has something very exciting for you. So the reason you get excited is you say, finally, this thing is over. Finally, this thing I've been praying about, debating about, fussing about, complaining about. Tonight, it is over. The matter is concluded. And I prophesy to you tonight when you leave this building, you're not going to go home and question it anymore because the decision is going to be made to bring it to an end in the name of Jesus. Amen. Second word, not only conclusions, but completeness. Completeness is the second word. Now watch. In your closeout, everything may not be complete, but you must be complete. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying to you? First word, conclusion. Second word is complete. Everything may not be complete, but you must be complete. You say, Bishop, what does that mean? You must be whole. You ain't going into 2017 half. You going in whole. And let me help all you single people. 
Thinking you're going to get married and it's going to complete you is the biggest joke in the world. I ain't looking for no half somebody. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Two half people don't make a whole person. Two whole people make a whole person. So God told me specifically it's time for us to begin to walk in wholeness. Everything complete, nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing segregated, nothing fragmented, completely whole. You remember Jesus asking the man at the pool, do you want to be made whole? Insinuating the idea you could have been made whole a long time ago. Do you even want it? Some people are so comfortable in their present condition, they have learned to enjoy the victim mentality. And God did not call you to be a victim. He called you to be a victor. He did not call you to be incomplete. He called you to be complete. And you don't need nobody else to make you complete. Somebody shout, I am glad I'm whole tonight in Jesus' name. <laughs> to be mature. Maturity is found in Philippians chapter 3. Lord, help me finish preaching this word here. Paul said, I press to the mark, toward the mark of the high calling, which is found in Christ Jesus. Is that what he said? <laughs> then he said, forgetting those things that are behind and pressing toward what's before me. The mark of maturity is a person who has the ability to forgive and forget. I came by to tell you something. Before you go in 2017, get over it. Let people go. You cannot walk in maturity holding a grudge at the same time. That's what kids do. When you became a man, you put away childish things. Let's all grow up into maturity and wholeness. Can you say amen to that? Yeah. <clears throat> and then finally, and I, I won't even go back up there because I'm losing my voice. What was the first word that I gave you? Conclusions. Second word. Complete. Completeness. Here's the third word. Are you ready? Closure. Close. Say that word, closure. closure. So tonight, we are collectively, as a community, going to close the door on 2016. The Lord said, I shut the door and no man opens it. And where there's a sh shut door, there's going to be an open door. In other words, God don't close out one thing without opening something else. Now, I want to encourage you tonight to look at everything in 2016 that hurt you, disappointed you, whatever it was, discouraged you in any way, and I want you to see yourself taking the door and just closing it. But when you close it, lock it. Put the key in your hand and don't put the key in your pocket. Go throw the key in the trash can and look at the door and say, you are never open to me again in the name of Jesus. How powerful is a shut door? I'll tell you how powerful it is. When Elisha goes in to pray for the boy that he prophesied to the lady about, you remember that? Yes, the boy died. What's the first thing Elisha did? He went in the room, Carla, and he shut the door. Yeah, yeah. Because what he was saying is, I don't want anything from the past wow. Wow. in this boy's life to come into the realm or the room of resurrection. There are some things that can never be resurrected in your future until you close the door on your past. Are y'all with me right now? When you do a close out, you take inventory, which is a list of things you want to keep and a list of things you want to leave behind. Do the inventory in your life tonight and look at everything that's not going over with you and say, stay right there in that room called 2016. As a matter of fact, bitterness, you not coming in 2017. Anger, temper, depression, anxiety, panic disorders, confusion, 
doubt, none of that stuff is coming into 2017. I'm leaving you in 2016. 2016, you bothered me. You haunted me. You worried me. But in 2017, you are not welcome. I'm closing the door on you, and you are not coming through the threshold. You're not going to show up in my house, on my job, in my car, in my mind. You are locked out in the name of Jesus Christ. Can you say amen to that? Now, here's what the Lord is doing right now. He said, I am God, and I hold the keys of David. And he said, I shut doors no man can open, and I open doors no man can shut. With your hands raised right now, I see the Lord closing the door on your past. Let go. Leave it. No more hurt. No more pain. No more discouragement from that. That's over. That relationship, end it right now. That sickness, leave it right there. Whatever it is, leave it in 2016. The same door Elisha shut, Pastor Dick, is the same door the woman had just stood in a few days before that. Isn't it something? When God shuts doors, there's also open doors. So now see yourself walking away from that door and stepping into the threshold of a door that's wide open. You don't even know what's in that room, but when you look inside, all you feel is excitement. That room is called 2017. We've not even stepped in it yet. We're just standing in the door and we're so excited about it, we just want to run off in there. And God's saying, just stand there in the door and let expectation and anticipation build up inside of you. But first, be sure, 2016 is over. It's done. In the name of Jesus. Lift your hands. Father, I pray now. I break every curse from 2016. I dismiss every idea, every notion of doubt, depression, anxiety, panic disorders. It's all locked out now. It's over. It's concluded. We are complete. And now we stand right in a closed door saying, Father, we thank you that that one is over. And now we are excited about what is in front of us. We are clean. We are whole. We are mature. And we are super ready to run into the next room of our destiny. Now, if that's you, jump on your feet and begin to praise God like you lost your mind because you're so excited about what's over. Come on, tell three people it's over. It's over. Come on, tell three more people it's over. It's over. That day is over. The day of depression is over. The day of anxiety is over. The day of confusion is over. The day of debt is over. Bless your name, Jesus. Come on, y'all. Praise him for ending it for you. For finishing it in you. Paul said these words, and I'm going to give this to Pastor Dick. Paul said these words. I've learned a lot of things. Philippians chapter 1. I've learned a lot of things, but I'm confident of one thing. That he who began a good work in you shall also complete it. Yeah. Yeah. Honey, he wouldn't start you if he wasn't going to finish you. Your best days are in 2017. The best days you ever lived begin at midnight tonight. If you believe it, give God praise loud enough to make the devil scared of your destiny.